Hi, this is Corey McCarthy, and welcome to a new episode of Fit, Formidable, and Fantastic. That's right. Go after yourself. And welcome to a new Meatless Monday. It's where I'm going to address, as, as always, a, a vegan topic. This week, I want to touch on five of the most common vitamin or mineral deficiencies, not just with vegans, across the board, but what vegans can do to ensure they uh, get what they need um, for proper health with these vitamin and mineral deficiencies. Um, please bear with me. I'm going to be going off a, uh, a list that I have here of notes. Um, the first vitamin is uh, one that's uh, actually deficient in more than just vegans, but people always seem to attribute it to vegans, and that is B12. Now, B12 is a vitally is vitally important for brain, nervous system, uh, cell division, uh, blood formation, and um, according to data from the Tufts University, uh, forty percent of people have a B12 deficiency. Um, now, there's something to note here because people um, like to cite various B12. Uh, food sources, and you have to understand there are active and inactive forms of B12. The inactive forms are known as analogs. And this needs to be realized because the inactive forms can actually hinder the absorption of the active forms. And, um, for instance, one common myth is that brewer's yeasts or nutritional yeasts um, contain adequate B12 when, in fact, they do not, not unless they are fortified with B12. So that needs to be said. Um... However, some common vegan foods that, uh, that do contain B12 are things like spinach and mushrooms. Um, and also, it depends on the soil conditions uh, that they're uh, grown in. Um, but the, only main, the issue is that the amount is, per serving is just too low. It's too low. You'd have to consume inordinate amounts of these foods to get the proper daily recommended minimum. Of, uh, of B12 in your diet. Um, so, honestly, and I'm going to be honest here, and you may or may not want to hear this, but hey, it's your health. I would recommend that you consume fortified foods and that you supplement with uh, B12, a quality supplement. In fact, I would recommend even omnivores supplement with B12. It is a very common vitamin deficiency, and it's one you do not want to get involved with. So, moving on. The next uh, vitamin deficiency on, on the list is vitamin C. Believe it or not, vitamin C. Uh, which plays a, uh, a lot of key roles, actually, including healing rate, production of enzymes, synthesis of collagen. And, like I said, believe it or not, it's actually... A deficient vitamin. 50% um, of Americans, according to the USDA, are in fact vitamin C deficient. Um, and in fact, I guess one of the reasons you could say would be is a lot of ill-advised activities like smoking, for instance, can actually lower your serum vitamin C count. And people do engage in a lot of ill-advised activities. So uh, there you go. Luckily, there are a lot of vegan sources of vitamin C. Um, just 10 of them would be guava, red and green peppers, kiwis, oranges, grapefruits, tomatoes, strawberries, Brussels sprouts, and cantaloupe. And beyond this, you can supplement. Now, vitamin C is water-soluble, so any excess will just get pissed out, essentially. So I really wouldn't worry about uh, there aren't any toxic consequences to supplementing vitamin C. So if you think you need it, Go for it, especially if you're feeling like you might be coming down with something and you think you need the immune help. So the next one I want to touch on is vitamin D. Now, vitamin D is technically a hormone, uh, but for the sake of this, we'll just call it vitamin D. When you know, since it's called a vitamin, we'll just list it as a vitamin. Um, now, it assists with the absorption of minerals. It helps in intestinal health, bone health, and in males, in fact. Uh, low vitamin D is actually related to low testosterone levels and poor sperm quality. <laughs> you don't want that if you're a guy. And in fact, more than 50% of American population, according to the CDC, are deficient in vitamin D. 
Now, one easy way to get your vitamin D is to go outside. Get in the sun. Now, that might be hard in some areas, you know, where the sun might be, um, you know, covered by clouds and you might not get enough uh, of the rays. But being outside, generally speaking, is a great way to do that. Now, you may complain, oh, but I work, I work. Uh, you know, can you step out for even 15 minutes for a break? Maybe take a walk, sit outside? That, that's one way. And if you really can't, some quality vegan food sources of vitamin D include maitake mushrooms, portobello mushrooms, uh, chanterelle mushrooms. Um, yes, mostly it's in the mushrooms. And of course, you can get it in fortified vegan foods as well. But I'd also advise that you supplement. There's a, you know, you might be hearing this word over and over again, but I don't want to supplement. Well, stop being a purist. Listen, supplementing is there to supplement your diet. Get your diet in check, but it doesn't hurt to supplement with these things to, to prevent a deficiency. You know, being a purist might just lead to your downfall. So supplement, you know, find a good quality vegan supplement. They do exist. Now I'm going to get into uh, the first mineral on my list here, and that is iron. Iron is especially important in blood health. And according to one study, iron deficiency is actually very common in toddlers, adolescent girls, and women of childbearing age. Um, and But some of the top sources for vegans for iron are spirulina, soybeans, pumpkin seeds, quinoa, uh, blackstrap molasses, tomatoes, white beans, spinach, peaches, prunes, and lentils. So you can see that there's a lot of vegan foods that are very abundant in iron. And of course, you can also supplement. In fact, a really, really good quality that I highly recommend um, supplement for, uh, for iron is Mega Foods brand Blood Builder. It's actually non-GMO, it's vegan, it's whole food based, which means you don't need the ticket with a meal, and it's complete with supporting nutrients that can help the absorption. And, get this, it contains vitamin C and B12, which will aid in your quest to ensure you get proper levels of those, which I had mentioned before. And you can see the link that's going to appear up top. Um, you have to copy and paste it because I can't, uh, for some reason, put working URLs in the comments. Um, but copy and paste that and search that and you will be able to uh, find a direct link to the website where you can purchase or read more about uh, Mega Foods Blood Builder. Um, now, but I want to note uh, that you should really consult with your doctor regarding supplementation of iron. Um, you do not want to become, you know, uh, reach a toxic levels of iron in your body. So I really recommend you do not supplement. In fact, I don't supplement with iron. I get it from diet. But I would recommend you do not unless you truly are or at a risk for deficiency. So check with your doctor on that one um, because you can poison yourself. And the fifth um, mineral deficiency, it's, it's quite common is calcium. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's actually on there just like vitamin C. And calcium plays a vital role in bone health, uh, muscle health, heart health. But according to the USDA, 7 out of 10 Americans are deficient in calcium. So whether you want to think that, oh, people can't, you know, it's actually pretty common. And uh, But some of the top sources of calcium for vegans include kale, there's various greens that have it, um, tahini, almond butter, soy products, and, and also various beans, broccoli, oranges, figs, and dates. They all contain ample calcium. Um, now, um, one thing I should note, especially for men, is that high calcium intake from supplements has been linked recently to heart disease. Um, again, that's especially in men, the study found. So I would advise you get your calcium needs from your diet and only supplement, again, if you think you are deficient or at risk for deficiency. In fact, with anything, really, um, you know, except in, in, in situations where the, uh, you know, something might just get pissed out of your body, like with uh, vitamin C, where it's water-soluble, I would recommend you check and see if you have a deficiency, um, this is true of like fat soluble vitamins as well. Like I said, you don't have to worry so much about the water soluble ones, but it's it's always advised. But try to get it from diet the best you can, but there's nothing wrong with supplementing. In fact, it can fill in the holes you may not even be aware of. Um, 
But I do recommend you uh, get yearly physicals, blood panels done, and see what you may be deficient in. And it may actually surprise you. You may think there's things that you have, you know, an abundance in, but you're actually deficient in. So um, it could be a, a situation of absorption even, too. Maybe you're getting enough of it, but your body's just simply not absorbing it properly. And that's something you want to discuss with your doctor as well. But I hope this video has given you some information. Um, and those were five of the most common um, based on my research, the most common vitamin and mineral deficiencies out there. There are others, but those are the top five that I came across. Uh, but if you have any questions or would like some clarification or just want to, you know, add to this, feel free to leave comments below. And uh, I will see you guys this Friday for our regularly scheduled episode. Until then, stay fit, stay formidable, and stay fantastic. See you around. Thank <laughs> you.